Greetings ladies and gentlemen and all those beyond the binary. I'm Zach and this week I'm going to show you how to weld sanitary tubing with an SA200. So stay tuned. So if you're using an old power source like this that doesn't really have the greatest current control on it, you're going to need to kind of figure out about how many amps you're running. On inch and a half tubing like this, I like to run, if I'm walking the cup, around 36 amps, something like that. If I am freehanding it, I'll be anywhere between, say, 45 and about 60, depending on how in a hurry I am. Typically, I like to go on the lower end of that because it gives you a little bit more flexibility. If you, you know, jiggle the cup or if you're just kind of having a shaky day, something like that, kind of gives you a little bit more room to play around with. So you're going to need to get a clamp meter or something to this effect. This is just a fluke clamp meter. You can clamp it on your ground clamp, you can clamp it on your TIG torch, your power cable, whatever, uh, but it will show you how many amps you're pulling. And then you're gonna need some way to adjust the output of the power source. So my SA200, I have a ditch box wired into it so I can control the amperage uh, from the workbench here. And then I'm just running a, uh, I forget who makes this, but uh, I always heard these referred to as like a Boilermaker torch. It's a uh, like smaller 150 amp torch and uh, I really like it for doing work like this. So once you have your power source figured out, you're gonna need a way to purge the oxygen out of your pipe here. This is a purge setup that I got from uh, purgeplugs.com. Uh, purge Dragon, I believe is the name of it here. I really, really like this setup for welding sanitary tubing, uh, especially for ferrules and things like that. This one gets jammed in the pipe. Your argon connects here just through a uh, you know air chuck fitting blows through here and it comes out these little uh, ports here and will flood the pipe. So you just slip that in your pipe there. It will flood everything in this area with argon and it also acts, this aluminum block here acts as a heat sink if you're running a short ferrule like that. Kind of keeps them from warping. So I really like these guys. Uh, I am not sponsored by them or anything. I just use their sets here, really like them. Have always had good luck with them. So you basically just take this you jam it in your pipe like that. And then I use a dual flow meter over here. So I have my TIG torch on one side of the bottle. I have my purge on the other. And with this type purge set up, I'm gonna run between say about 15 and 20 cubic feet per hour. Uh, if you have too low of uh, purge there, you'll notice your weld will kind of sink in after you make the weld. And if you have too much, your weld will be kind of concave out you don't really want either one of those. So with this setup, depending on how many joints you have there, you're looking at about, yeah, like I said, 15 to 20 CFH, something like that. On my torch here, I'll probably run about the same, something like that. It doesn't really matter if you have a gray weld appearance afterwards because it has to be polished anyway. So let's go ahead and start up the welder. All right, so now you're gonna need to get a sick SA200. This is my 1968 red face that I restored. Uh, for getting about 50 amps, you're going to want to put it in first gear, and on this machine it's about 40, but since we've got a ditch box hooked up to it inside the shop there, we can do the fine current from inside there. So turn this guy on and get going. Alright, so I got my clamp meter here set for DC amperage. I'm just going to go ahead and clip this onto my TIG torch lead here. We'll hit zero, and then I've got a copper block here that I use for stuff like this, so we'll just go ahead and light up on it. And we're 47, we can go up a bit here. So really, I guess I can give you, so on mine, all the way down to zero is 30 amps, all the way up is 80 amps. So about 50, 50 amps right there at 40 on the fine current. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and strike this just like I would any other lift arc power source. I hang out there where I first lit the arc to get a nice burn through. Now I'm using my left hand to hold the torch and my right hand to rotate the pipe. This is just a spool so I could go ahead and turn it like this. Now typically I will use long ferrules, they're uh, an inch and an eighth I believe, and they're a lot easier to weld because you can just walk the cup on them. I accidentally ordered these half inch short ferrules. Typically you would use these someplace where space is really short and then you need to come out of a machine and go right into a short 90 or a short 45. Um, but this was just my goof and it just uh, 
doesn't really hurt anything other than it's kind of a pain in the butt to weld. But as you can see here, even running off of an old 1968 welder, still does a nice job. There we've come around, and then now at the end here I will speed up and kind of whip out because you will end up with a little black spot of smudge inside the pipe there and it'll cause a pinhole. I've had it happen. That doesn't look too bad, I can live with that. You'll notice the weld's a little gray here. Doesn't matter, this is gonna get polished and passivated before it goes in service anyway. So this pipe was salvaged from a dairy and it's kind of nasty, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take a die grinder here with a wire wheel in it, stainless wire wheel, mind you, and go ahead and clean this up. I'm not exactly sure what this stuff is on here, but it smells really bad when it cooks off. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit it with a die grinder there. Now you can go ahead and hook your gas up to your purge deal here. Slides up in the pipe. There's holes on the back side of this aluminum plate here. So you can stick your hand back there to make sure you have gas flowing out of it. Since you're not purging the full pipe, you're only purging about a section like that. It does not take very long to purge that out, so we should be good. So now I can just go ahead and grab the torch here. I'm gonna be lazy and just use my clamp here as something to prop off of. I'm gonna start right about here. And we'll go ahead and light up right there. Same as on the others here, just rotating the pipe. Walking the torch back and forth just a little bit here to give a little bit of side to side motion. Trying to keep an even travel speed. going on around Ooh, I'm getting warm all right now I'm coming back to where I started I'm going to run back over that just a little bit and then I'm going to speed up and whip out so I don't end up with a pinhole. That looks pretty good. All right, I'm just going to take my die grinder here Wee, and polish this guy up. Love that thing. Thank you all for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below and give me some ideas for future videos. This just happened to be a project that I'm working on here and I thought, well, you know, I got my SA200 hooked up. I'll go ahead and make a video. So anyway, I'm Zach. Thank you for watching.